All right, I want to transition to another topic you've been very involved with this week, several hearings on the Hill regarding Benghazi. We want to play a little bit of a snippet of what you had to say in the midst of one of those hearings this week. It would seem to me that the president should be just as concerned about Americans dying in Libya as he is about Syrians dying in Syria. Congressman, uh, do you suggest, do you believe that the president is not truly as concerned as he should be about what happened in Benghazi and getting to the bottom of the truth? The proof is in the actions. The president said right after the attack and the murder of our ambassador and three others that this was a priority, uh, but yet nothing's happened. No one in the administration has been held accountable for their incompetence in leaving four Americans behind. And just as important, nobody's been captured. And the, the leader, Abdu Katala, can be interviewed on, on our television by a reporter sitting in a hotel in Benghazi, and we can't go get this guy. Uh, so uh, it shows that the cre credibility of the United States in capturing people who murder Americans is very weak with Americans. And so let's hold people accountable in the administration, State Department, and more importantly, go after the bad guys. This country can do that. We just haven't done it. The pri uh, president seems to have a priority somewhere else other than capturing these outlaws. Well, the president did mention uh, what we believe was supposed to be under seal or secret to some extent, the fact that the Justice Department has indicted specific suspects in this particular case. Is that for you at least a sign of progress moving forward? Well, it's a sign that we know who did it. Now let's go capture the, the terrorists from Ansar al-Sharia that took credit the next day who have been indicted in this uh, uh, murder. And let's capture those individuals working with the, the Libyan people, whatever it takes to capture them. So we know who did it. Why aren't they in custody? That's my question after a year. Uh, are you encouraged by the fact that your counterpart, uh, your GOP colleague uh, over on the House Oversight Committee, uh, announces, Daryl Issa has announced that he's going to subpoena two key State Department employees uh, in an effort to get their side of the story? Well, yes. Benghazi's not going away, no matter what people want or say that they wanted to just move on down the road. It was a long time ago. I think that was the word from the administration. Uh, members of the House, I'm the chairman of the Terrorism Subcommittee, and other committees are going to continue to pursue Benghazi till we get, we get the truth and we hold people accountable, both the killers and the people who uh, showed, I think, incompetence in our own government. All right, Congressman Poe, we thank you very much for your time. Again, we'll be speaking with your colleague, Elliot Engel, from across the aisle shortly. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, I want to turn to uh, something you were very involved in this week, and those were hearings on Benghazi as we still uh, look for answers there. Uh, we had your Republican counterpart, your colleague Ted Poe, on a little bit earlier. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about that accountability review board and whether it was truly independent uh, from any influence from uh, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton or anyone else. Um, what is your confidence level in the ARB and what we learned from that? I have a high confidence level in it because, first of all, you're, you're talking about two individuals uh, Ambassador Pickering and uh, Chairman uh, Mullen, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Um, they're both Im impeccable people. Uh, Mr. Pickering worked in Republican administrations. Uh, they're not going to whitewash anything. They're, they're trying to get to the bottom of what happened. See, f for me, Benghazi is not so much of where we can assess blame. Uh, it's to make sure no Benghazi's ever happen again, while realizing that there are terrorists all over the world that want to do us harm and that uh, they rear their ugly heads. I mean, we see what's happening uh, today in, in Kenya. So for me, it's to make sure uh, that we do not have any more Benghazis. There is a report that they issued of 26 recommendations. Hillary Clinton adopted all of those. And, and I'm, I'm satisfied with it. I mean, some of my colleagues seem obsessed on heads rolling or trying to point the finger at Hillary Clinton or try to soften her up because she's doing so well in the polls for a potential 2016 run. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in making sure that this is the last time it happens, knowing full well that in high-risk areas, uh, th these things are going to happen. Well, what about the reality that they, the DOJ, though, has indicted people? No one's been arrested. Uh, the FBI has not been able to talk to key members. Should there be more pressure from our White House, from our leadership, from our president, on the Libyan government to help us in that effort? Uh, you know, it's been more than a year later. These families and, and, and people are still waiting for someone to be held accountable for four Americans dead. Well, I want someone to be arrested. I'm just as frustrated as anybody. But we're, we're told that, that they're going through actions to try to find the people that did it. Um, I'm confident that they will. I think someone obviously should be arrested, whoever perpetrated the, this heinous act. But I don't want to see it politicized. I really don't. I, I think that Democrats and Republicans have equal 
a charge in, in finding out what really happened, and I don't want it to come, become a partisan finger pointing. I think that I have faith in in, uh, in, in Admiral uh, in the Admiral. I have faith in the Ambassador. Uh, I don't think that report is whitewashed. Hillary Clinton has has uh, had implemented all 26 of the recommendations and then some, and and let's make sure that the Congress plays its part and, and puts forward money to, to make sure that our, our brave citizens that are all around the world in harm's way are protected. We need more money for embassy security. I'd like to lead that charge. And, and let me say in the Foreign Affairs Committee, in a, in a, in a bipartisan way, uh, we, we are trying to, to come up with ways uh, to ensure that uh, panels uh, in the future are, are, are less controversial. But, but I have uh, amazing uh, confidence in, 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 in these two gentlemen, and I, I have no reason to doubt anything they say. Congressman Engel, always good to see yeah, you. Thanks for here. coming in. Thank you.